What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Super Micro Computer Stock, ticker symbol SMCI, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Wednesday, March 6th. All right, guys, kind of a wild ride for SMCI stock today, down something like 9% at one point this morning, finishing the day up 1.53%, up $16.49 a share. I mean, it, listen, it's up, I don't know, about five, six points after hours. As always, I mean, look, if I'm a bull, yeah, I'd prefer it's up after hours. But the truth is, whether it you know, confirms your bias or goes against your thesis, Volume is incredibly low. We actually did see a little bit of respectable volume uh, after the close on this upside move, and then we saw kind of a fade while the volume slowed, and then consolidation holding about you know a little bit higher after hours. But regardless, a nice upside move, especially into the close. But you know, off that those those lows of the day again, down just an estimate, something like nine percent today, perhaps a little bit more. Quite the recovery here uh, intraday. You know, a lot of that downside move likely came from the news that we got out of AMD today that they may need a special export license to sell some of their processors in China. But a nice recovery here today. The recovery actually more impressive, arguably, if we look at AMD than AMD's recovery because AMD did finish just slightly red, essentially flat, but super micro, you know, able to reclaim some green. So we find ourselves now in a really interesting spot because we're actually closer to that big level we were discussing than we were last night. So let's start here. Let's take a look at our daily ritual, the volume profile analysis on the five minute chart. This is where we're always kind of trying to pull a little bit of bias out of the market and see, okay, w were there any big shifts in volume that correlated with an obvious move in stock price that were perhaps outside of what may be contextual for that time of day? So understand we expect bigger volume off the open and then a dip intraday, kind of a U shape, and then usually, you know, accelerating volume into the close, but not nearly as much typically on a normal day of what we saw on the open. So if we look here, I'm kind of looking at this downside move where we got kind of that, you know, you could almost argue like capitulation point on the day where we kind of bottomed out. And then, I mean, you know which one I'm circling next. We're looking at this move as well here. Those are the obvious moves on the day, at least in my eye. Let's take a look. Now I know, I know some of you guys are probably looking at this big red candle and you're like, yeah, dang, the bears won that move. Well, not so fast. I'm usually looking for at least three, if not four consecutive candles of elevated volume compared to what would be expected. One, even two for me aren't really enough. What I will say though, is that that was that bigger red candle that essentially led us to just about the lows of the day. We officially bottomed out, you know, within the next 15 minutes or so. But it was essentially that low of day here because you can see that that wick was essentially the same. This was kind of in my head the intraday capitulation candle because we got that big volume on essentially a solid red candle with very small wicks, which tells me that that wasn't as much of a battle and that was just kind of a lot of selling going on on that candle. Perhaps some evidence of intraday capitulation ended up not really being the best move, of course, in hindsight, because you end up seeing this big recovery and then pump into the close. And what, what's actually interesting is, yeah, we expect bigger volume into the close, but honestly, this occurred, I mean, it really accelerated a little earlier than what I might expect. We, we accelerated on terms of, in terms of volume 25, 30 minutes out from the close, which usually I would see this start to occur maybe on that third candle out from the close. So, but I mean, you know, it, it's to be expected on this big green uh, push into the close above those EMAs, like the nine EMA pulling away from that, not even giving, him a, giving it a second look. So, you know, listen, is it the craziest volume profile I've ever seen? No, not even close. Is it worth saying, listen, I'll give that close to the bulls? Yeah, I'm comfortable saying that, okay? But of course, the real test is always the, the open tomorrow. So let's move on here and take a look at the levels that I'm watching, the self-fulfilling prophecy and psychological levels as we head into tomorrow, Wednesday. So kind of an interesting 30-minute chart here today. You guys remember in last night's video, we were talking about how I would love to see on any test of the 50 period a hard hold as a support from a bullish perspective and a hard downside break on huge volume from a bearish perspective. Now, 
What's interesting is we actually did see a downside break in pre-market and then a retest and fade on decent volume. But you guys remember from the volume profile, it wasn't it wasn't tremendous volume to the downside off that open. But it was, you know, contextual opening volume. However, we recovered that, of course, on that higher volume close. And we're now we just saved it on here on the 30 minute chart into the close. We're sitting above that that 50 period. But. We didn't really spend a whole lot of time above that 50 period in intraday today. Okay, so looking ahead to tomorrow, here's really what I'm looking at from a bullish perspective. Any retest of that 50 period, I'm going to want to see a high volume bounce and pull away, but ideally also enough volume and pull away to start yanking up that 50 period to a more ascending position like we were seeing yesterday. Okay, this 50 period is kind of easy to tug around. Bears, what are you guys looking at? Well, ideally you'd like to see the stock break hard downside, similar to what we saw here, but ideally during regular hours um, on as much volume as possible or in pre-market and then a retest and a, a, a huge amount of volume, like obvious on the five minute volume profile away from that 50 period and get that 50 period here on the 30 minute to start curling downside. Whereas today we kind of just flattened it out a bit. All right, let's move on now to the four hour chart and take a look. You can see here that that, that 50 period, that white line is going to take its time because we've had a pretty decent move here in the last couple of days, it's not an immediate, you know, it's not as easy to get moved around, of course. It's a longer time frame. But, Bulls, if you recall from last night, we actually kind of got what we were looking at. I was talking about how I'd like to see this four hour 50 period curl upside, and a claim of 900 would be beautiful. And we actually kind of got that here today. It, it curled upside, it continued to move at a more aggressive pace upside following the, following the stock, right? And we're kind of like right at, if not slightly above, 900 bucks a share, which just adds that additional psychological barrier ahead of that psychological level. But, you know, really, if I'm a bull looking at this chart, I kind of want to see that thing get above 1,000 bucks a share as soon as possible, but understanding that it's likely to take some time. Uh, bears, your ideal scenario, just have that 50 period here on the four-hour chart flatten out ahead of, you know, it's kind of too late for 900 perhaps flatten out ahead of 950, but especially ahead of a thousand bucks a share. Now let's take a look at the most important chart of all. That's going to be the daily here. Now I'm looking at the most obvious story possible here. Like you show this to anyone on the street with somewhat of an understanding of how stock charts look and work. What they tell you is the story I want to look, I want to be watching because that's the story that has the most eyeballs. The most obvious story is always going to have the most looks, and that means the most activity is likely to happen around that most obvious, clear story. On the daily chart, there, you know, there's no need to show off here, right? We, we just want to keep it simple because the more you start complicating things, I think the less contextual and effective it becomes. So this is kind of similar to what we actually saw last night here, right? I'm looking at three numbers. Because the moving averages are irrelevant. They're down below 600 bucks a share and near 300 bucks a share. They really take their time, and this has been a heck of a move. So, three levels. First of all, bulls. Non negotiable, in my opinion, at least in the very short term. Hold a thousand bucks a share. Bears, the ultimate goal of a bear is to kind of reclaim below a thousand bucks a share. So, that's what you ideally do not want to see occur. Um, that's a huge, that's the biggest psychological level that we've seen on this stock, of course. Ideally, priority number one tomorrow, if you're a bull, claim 1100 as a real support level. We've really yet to be able to do so. Get above 1100, claim it as support, and hold above it on high volume into the close. That's ideal. And then potentially look to utilize 1100 as kind of a trampoline to make our way up toward 12. You know, through that all-time high, of course, 1155, but I'm really looking toward that next, you know, round number, 1200 as the next level. Bears, 1200 is kind of like your 1000, okay? Do not give that up, ideally. Ideally, don't get, really give up a new all-time high. But Bears, number one priority is to stay below 1100 bucks a share tomorrow, fade off of that on high volume, and head down toward 1000 If you can get this thing back down in the 900s, that would likely discourage a lot of bulls and encourage a lot of your peers, bears, right? And, you know, if you're a bear, your number one priority is to do whatever it takes to discourage bulls. Same goes for you bulls in terms of discouraging the bears. A hold of 1100 does that. A new all-time high does that. A crack of 1200 bucks a share really does that.
Now, let's take a look at what was the options bias, the bias of the options traders today. This is all data, all volume just from today as the traders position themselves heading into tomorrow, Wednesday. So we had 278,000 total contracts traded. That's a good sample size. We can pull some good data out of this. 169,000 of those were calls and 109,000 of those were puts. So we are seeing a call side bias on the overall call put ratio. But interestingly, if we break this down by delta range, every delta range, okay, is leaning call heavy, except for the more undecided time frame, which is going to be that 0 to 20 delta range, which is really, on average, going to be the short-term speculators, because those are those far out of the money, cheapy, gambly style calls and puts. That one's a little more undecided, about 60,000 calls and about 63,600 puts. So not overwhelmingly by any means, but there is just a slight put side bias on that short term speculator zero to 20 delta range, whereas the rest of the delta ranges, all four, you know, are, you know, the four others from 21 to 100 delta basically are leaning call side to varying degrees, but call side nonetheless. Hey, listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow.